Hello ladies and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the journey if you are new here. Today I'm going to be talking about positive adoption language, a little bit of why it's important, and some of the comparisons between old and new language. This is meant to be a video that is informative to help you kind of learn a little bit more about what has changed and why and just feel more comfortable having conversations around adoption. A lot of the terminology that I'm going to be going over today was developed in the 70s and 80s by adoption search and support groups to help normalize adoption and take away some of the negative stigma. You accomplish three things by using positive adoption language. The first is to show respect to the courage and sacrifice of the birth parents. The next is to the adoptive parents. You validate that this is their forever child. This is not just some consolation child. And to the child, you reassure them that this is their forever family and they are seen as equal as biological children. Before we jump, jump into the terminology, I know there's been a lot of preamble, but I just wanna read one last quote from adoptwithlove.org that I think helps bring together the reason why changing language around adoption is so important. Positive adoption language should also be taken into consideration when talking to families about their children and their decision to adopt. For example, it may feel easy to say something such as, it's so wonderful that you're adopting, I could not raise someone else's child, or your son is so lucky or so much better off with you as a parent. These phrases are problematic because they are based on unfounded assumptions about adoption. They imply that adoptive parents are different and are to be glorified other, over other parents. They imply that their children should feel grateful for having been adopted. They also imply that birth parents are unfit parents. All of these are misconceptions associated with adoption. So that's our goal going into this is to change some of those assumptions and not continue to perpetuate them. I'll have all of these terms listed down below as well as some resources if you wanna go educate yourself just a little bit more and why positive adoption language is so important. The first phrase that you hear quite a bit, it's just a slip of the tongue, is real parent. And the newer updated PAL version of that is birth parent or biological parent. Both of these phrases honor the birth family while showing equal respect to the adoptive parents who are parenting every single day. I really liked this one once I started educating myself and, and switching out my, my vocabulary. People used to say, give up for adoption. Um, now you say, make an adoption plan. Uh, this helps to have the child not feel like they are second best or that they were disregarded or discarded. They weren't given up. Uh, everything was very intentional from the beginning. Their birth family made a plan for them. Similarly, when you, when you say put up for adoption, uh, there's just something a little bit flippant about that. So choosing adoption is the more positive form of that now, saying that she chose adoption for her child. She is making an adoption plan. Uh, sounds a lot better than she put the kid up for adoption. Sounds a little meh. This one's really subtle, and when I heard it for the first time, it was such a, oh, of course moment, but it, it, it gets its root in wanting to make sure that that child feels secure in their house forever, knowing that this is their house forever. But instead of saying is adopted, this child is adopted, you say this child was adopted. It happened and now it's over and it can't be changed. Otherwise, kids start to get confused as they get just a little bit older and they think that maybe they're going to get adopted again or adopted into another family or you can choose to stop having them as your adopted child. Saying that it is a thing that happened and now you moving on to another term instead of saying you are my adopted child, just you're my child. By using the phrase my child, you are equalizing them to any biological children you might have in the house. Same thing, there's no real reason to specify adoptive parent anymore. It's just parent, um, unless you're talking about the adoption triad. Uh, there's, you shouldn't ever greet someone and be like, this is Timmy and this is their adoptive parent. I don't think people would do that one a lot, but it gets on all the lists, so I thought I'd mentioned it. The next one has to deal with that period between being matched and when relinquishment actually happens, and people also will often ask, well, what if she keeps her child we're switching out that phrase for a more positive one, which is choosing to parent her child. It's always her choice. Uh, 
to make an adoption plan. That's why we call it an adoption plan, because it's just a plan, it can change, and she can always decide to parent her child. So there, you wanna take away the negativity, like she decided to keep her child as if she's going back on a bargain. No, it's always their choice to choose to parent their child. So we wanna swap out that language. These are just some of the common phrases that I had to work on changing when I started talking about adoption. Definitely a few of them tripped me up to begin with and it took me multiple times of correcting myself to really switch all the way over to the positive adoption language. I hope this has been a little bit interesting. It gets you thinking just a little bit about it. Like I said, none of these are huge changes to make in your vocabulary. They're just things to work on shifting towards. I know I really like videos like this just because it makes me feel more confident having a conversation if I have the right vocabulary or at least I know how to phrase my questions in a respectful way whenever I'm talking to someone who is going through something that I am not a part of. So I hope that you take this with that same attitude of just hoping that this helps to have that conversation go more smoothly. Like I said, I'll have a full list down below as well as some resources. I just went over some of my top ones that I've heard or I've worked on. Um, but let me know if there's any others that I didn't list below that you think I should have. Anyway, until next time, ladies, keep on fighting.